Welcome back, everyone. I'm sorry I haven't uploaded anything in a little while. I've been uh, really busy with family stuff and grinding like crazy in Star Stable, which that got me thinking, maybe I should talk about what it's like for a new Star Stable player. But before I get into that, I want to mention that we are up to 31 subs now. <laughs> Wow, I'm so excited about that. Thank you all so much for your support. You don't even know how much it means to me. I'm so excited. <sighs> okay, so now let's get right into the video. So first and foremost, to get the most out of the game, you have to get Star Rider. There's just no way around it. Without Star Rider, the game just isn't very interesting because most everything isn't accessible. There are promotions for discounted Star Rider that Star Stable promotes sometimes, and usually there are codes you can redeem for seven free days or three free days, but whether you pay for it or not, you have to get it. For lifetime members, there is a vendor in Moreland that offers special items. Every piece he has is offered to these lifetime members at no extra cost, with a new item being added every month. I think that's kind of a cool system. Okay, secondly, be prepared to spend most of your time in game doing dailies. This varies from daily races to level your horses to chores for reputation and shillings. The more quests you complete and areas you unlock, the more dailies you acquire. This means that eventually it adds up to hours and hours of daily quests. It then gets difficult later to juggle whether or not to spend your time questing for experience points or doing dailies for rep and horse experience. I personally stopped doing the chore dailies completely to make more time to do quests for experience and doing a few clustered races for my horse's XP. I figure eventually I'll probably go back to doing these chore quests, but for now I get enough shillings from doing my normal questing and the horse race dailies give me enough reputation that until I'm a higher level, I'm not going to worry about that. I don't know if that's a good thing to do or not, but that's kind of just what I've decided to do. Thirdly, you're going to spend money. <laughs> Probably a lot of money. This game is set up in a way that is downright predatory when it comes to purchasing items and the pressure to do so. There's even a paywall block to how many quests you can complete in a day. If you get so far in a chain of quests, you'll have to either wait until the following day to continue or pay 75 star coins to pass a day to continue. That's the greediest system ever, and as someone that grinds like crazy, I hate it. Also, there's a constant stream of new horses, pets, outfits, tack, etc., and the desire to get them, not to mention the peer pressure. Speaking of peer pressure... There's a lot of really young players in this game, and I personally have come across a few younger players that I feel really bad for because they don't have funds, obviously, to get star coins to buy the things that they want, and there's a lot of peer pressure from other players, like clubs have certain club outfits and club horses, and not everyone has the income to put into the game to get those items. So these kids are feeling left out and they're feeling sad and they're feeling not good enough because they can't get these items. And I think that that is a problem, a big problem within the game. But maybe I'll touch on that more in another video. Fourth, be prepared to hear about how much better old Star Stable Online was. Most players that have been around for a long time talk about how bad the game is now compared to how it was. Systems like cold weather resistance horses that were removed to dumb down the game. It's actually really unfortunate that they did that because that sounds interesting. It's probably like most MMOs that get worse with time rather than better. Unless, of course, we're talking about Final Fantasy XIV. I wish I could have experienced the game in its former glory, but it's too late for that now. Fifth, wishing you could be a higher level. I see level 20, 21, 22 players who can go to areas of the map I can't, and I'm just like, ugh, I want to be up there already. 
They have so many outfits and horses and friends and they're in higher clubs and it makes it hard to not be a little jealous. But then I remember in time, I'll get there too. Plus, one benefit of being a new player is that everything is new. Every time I unlock a new area, it's so exciting to experience it for the first time. Most areas in the game are actually really beautiful and there's a lot of life in the world. I also don't have to miss the game as it was because I didn't know it then. Also, getting to meet new people, despite <laughs> my social anxiety. I've had the benefit of meeting some incredible people who have been so willing to teach me and answer any questions I have, completely welcoming me into their circles. It's been really amazing. There isn't a single person I've come across yet that is rude or mean. Maybe I'm just lucky, or maybe they don't exist. I don't know. And lastly, learning to live with the bugs. There's a lot of bugs in this game. For example, in Fort Pinta, there's a building where if you go into it and you fall from the stairs just a little bit, you'll sink straight into the earth and get trapped and be forced to call for pickup. Constantly, everywhere you go, your character will randomly have a giant fishing pole come out and string all over the place, or a giant carrot. I even had an orange one time. I don't know where that came from your shovel, you're just carrying it around, which makes it pretty annoying, especially trying to record because if you're wanting to get like a serious scene of you, you know, walking on the beach with your horse and then all of a sudden you've got this giant orange or carrot and it's just, it kind of throws you out of it. Apparently this is something that the community has been complaining a lot about. Star Stable concentrates more on dumping out new products like horses and outfits to sell but they don't address the bugs within the game. So yeah, that's something I guess you're just going to have to live with as a new player. My goal with Star Stable Online is to delve into the competition side of the game, which is a whole new world compared to the quest grinding and horse collecting. I'm still working hard to level up my competition horses, which my dressage horse is completely maxed. Yay! and my own personal level. From the little bit I've got to discover about this side of the game, it's complex and has a whole large community tied to it. It requires a lot of preparation, practice, and organization, but that's for a separate video. Okay, and that was my six top things you deal with as a new Star Stable Online player. If there's anything that you think I missed, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear your input. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I would absolutely love having you around. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and until next time, bye.